number two is three times the natural log of two plus two times the natural log of five. And four is two times the natural log of five minus the natural log of two. Six is natural log of two minus natural log of five. And eight is three times the natural log of two minus the natural log of five. 10 is two times the natural log of seven minus four times the natural log of three. 12 is natural log of three plus two times the natural log of seven. And 14 is three times the natural log of seven minus six times the natural log of three. 16 is five times the natural log of three plus the natural log of seven. And yeah. Um, 18 A is W equals 93 is the log base 10 of D plus 65. And 18 B is 251 miles per hour. 220 is 4, 22 is 1, 24 is 1, 26 is 75, 28 is negative 2, and then these guys we're going to put on the screen because reading it would be a lot more atrocious to listen to than to your y'all to read it, I guess is what I mean. 30 is right there. And, and 32. No, not really. Well, the sign matters, right? So that negative would have to be, or that's not, I'm not even looking at the right one. That negative would have to be with the one eighth, right? So as long as the signs are correct, you, they could be moved around because of the commutative property. I don't know. Number 34 and 36 are there. And 38 and 40 are those. Squeeze a little further down, and there's 42. And then, let's see, 44 through those. Grab with a different shot there. Whoop. 44, natural log of 13. 46, and I think we can get 48 as well. And 50 is 2.096. 52 is 0 0.143. 54 is 1.938, 56 is 1.585, and 58 is 0 0.271. So, what questions do we have on those? 18. Number eighteen. Tornadoes. Distance D and miles that tornado travels is all of that mess. 
where W is the wind speed in miles per hour. The tornado expressed W in terms of log D. Okay, so let's write it, see what's happening. So D equals 10 to the W minus 65 over 93. Okay, so it's an exponential form. We need to turn that into logarithmic form. So what do we do? Expect both sides of logarithm? Take the log of both sides. So we could, or we could just like convert straight away, right? Because it's, because it, this is the base and, and this would be the argument and then this is what it equals, right? That's totally fine. Log base 10 equals, oh, not well, equals, kind of, of D, thank you. <laughs> thank you and me and everybody else. Should I come to this class or should I continue my class? That is up to you. If you'd rather stay focused where you are, that's fine. I'm, and watch the recording, you can do that. Or you can come and join in person. Either one's fine. Okay. We want, let's see, let me reread what the, what it's actually asking. Express W in terms of log D. Yes, we do want to get W by itself. Right. So, multiply both sides by 93 over 1. Yes. <coughs> 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 my goodness. I choked up. Did I still have water in my glass? Nope. Get some water. It's all right. I get some. <coughs> mm. And then we would add 65, ultimately, right? Yeah. So it would be 93 log 10 equals W. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we know that we don't actually have to write the, write the base 10. So we can leave it off. They didn't in the book, but you certainly could. Did you need part B as well, B, or? Tornado travels 100 miles, 100 miles, estimate the wind speed. So where does the 100 go? Into D. Into D. Okay. Yeah. 93 times the log of 100. Plus 65. 10 to the what equals 100? Two. Two. So let's turn into two times 93 plus 65, and then I bet you got the rest from there, right? Easy money. And you said what number? 32. 32, okay. Okay, got a fun one for us here. Expansion. <coughs> All right, we need to expand the natural log of a whole heap of mess. 4D after the fifth over the eighth root of one minus three D. And we are expected to expand it. So what should we do? Absolutely. Natural log of 4d f to the fifth minus the natural log of the, we might, just for grins and giggles, why it is to the 1 8th, because I bet that would be 
doable in one step. That's 3d to the 1 8th. All right, because we're going to want that in a minute. Now what do we have? If we want it fully expanded, plus minus one eighth natural log of one minus three d. We can't do anything with that because we don't have any property for a subtraction inside the argument. Easy money. What else? I, I went ahead and and because it would have been after the fifth, and so I went ahead and pulled it to the front. Yeah. It's well. Wait. What did you say? What? Right. 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 Yes. Okay. What else? 40. Condense. Okay. The other way around. That's good. Got nice rounded questions. <laughs> Number 40 is. 5 times the log base 7 of something, 2x. <coughs> Minus 1 third log base 7. Of 5x plus 1. Okay, what now? You can put it on top of the, like move the thing back to the third. So you can turn it into log 7 of 2x to the third. I'm sorry, yes. 7 5x, log 7 to the third root of 5x plus 1. Mm -hmm. I got distracted because I was wondering how they wrote their answer. And they did both. Which was surprising. I would have figured that they would have done the conjugated one only. But they listed both. Now what? Since there's a minus, you turn it into a divide. Mm -hmm. Log base 7 of 2x to the fifth. I wonder, did they also uh, shove that, that together? Let me see. Yeah, they did. That's what I thought. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that on this step as well. Turn that into 32x to the fifth. Why is it 32? Because 2 to the fifth is 32. over the cube root of 5x plus 1. Now, they, in their answer key, say that you could have circled this and moved on. I don't particularly like that answer, and I would have. The better answer would be to get this out of the denominator, so how would we do that? Almost. No, no, not, a, not that. It's, I'm say, I've been saying conjugate, but that's not really correct. That's not really, I don't mean conjugate. We multiply it by something, and it's not exactly that, because it's the third root, not the square root. Multiply it times 5x plus 1 to the 2 thirds over 5x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Why is it that? Because 
Because if you change the one on the bottom to 5x to the 1 plus the 1 third, since they're multiplied by each other, the exponents add, so then it gets you 3 thirds. So yes, five. which is 1. Yes. All of that is true. So, I mean, let me write down what you, what you said, and just for the sake of video and everything else. So if we write this with a rational exponent, this would be one third. And what we want to get rid of this is we want to turn that into a one and one third plus two thirds is one, right? So then how do you write it? So in, the, in our final bit, the log base seven of 32x to the fifth, times, what did they expand that? Curious. No, they don't. Okay, that's, I, I agree with them on that. Times the cube root of 5x plus 1 squared over 5x plus 1. That's the final answer. I, the, the, key, the key says this or this. This is a better answer, in my opinion. But there we go. Anything else on this one before we hit, hit the next lesson? I don't know. 46. 46. Make sure. Yeah. Sounds fine. 46. What do you think you're supposed to do? And I'll just tell you yes or no. <laughs> and if it's no, then we'll, then we'll definitely do it to show you. Because it's all minuses. It's, it's not actually all minuses, is it? Yeah. Or is it? The first one's a plus. But oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Minus is in between. If you don't want it to be a three stack, you just turn into x over y. Z cubed instead of negative three. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just just cleaning up that compound fraction. Yep. That's exactly right. Anything else from this lesson before we do the next one? 34. 34. 34. Okay. What did you get? What did you get on 34? Oh, you can't do that. So what you did wrong was you need to, you have to split up the, the plus and minus. You have to do, deal with the uh, multiplication property first, and then you can pull the exponents out because they, they wouldn't all apply to everything. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, I, I can like show you at least part of it, and, and then we can go from there. Uh, log base 7 of a whole heap of crap. Um, h squared times j to the 11th times something to the negative fifth, k to the negative fifth. So you would have to split it up into the log base 7 of h squared plus the log base 7 of j to the 11th, etc. And then you can deal with putting the 2 out here and the 11 over here. And the thing, because because these these exponents don't apply to everything; they apply only to those individual things. So you'd have to do that part first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. All right. Are you ready for what? what? Are you ready for three point four? Do you have more questions? I am ready for three point four. Here we go. All right. Let's see. What numbers did we do on this one? 2 to 26, yep, that looks like what I would assign if I was assigning right at the moment. So here we go. Number 2 is 1. 4 is 5. 6 is negative 3. 10, A is... 10, A. No, 8. Oh, 8. Did I skip 8? Sorry. 8 is negative 9. 10 A is A equals 5,000 E to the 0 0.03 T. 
and A equals 5,200, 5, times 1.03 to the T. Only the T, excuse me, only the 1.03 is to the T, so it's in parentheses. 8B is about 89 years. It's not 810. 10B is still that. 10C, the annual compounded account would be better, would be a better choice. 12 is 100 million. 14 is 10 thirds, which is approximately equal to 3.33. 16 is 16. 18 is no solution. 20 is plus or minus 256. 40 is the net, oh, I don't know what I'm saying, sorry. <laughs> 40 is the next one over here, but that's not what we want. 22 is plus or minus six. 24 is plus or minus two. And 26 is 2. Questions we have on those? Um, 4. I bet it was just a mistake, but we will certainly look at it. Like just a little mistake is what I mean. Do you know what this equals? I don't either, but we will find out together. Number 4 is 32 to the x minus 1 equals... 4 to the x plus 5. All right. What strategy do we want to use? Like to have them have like bases. I think that's a great idea. So. Like 2 to the 5th and the square. 2 to the 5th. Why do I? I've done this twice. I've written two, I've written 32 if you have a 2 base as 2 to the 8th. I don't mm. know why. Got some weird, weird mistake pro programmed in there. 5x minus 5 equals 2x plus 10. And, oh, if you would write the right number. And then from there, it's easy money, yeah? I got a wrong answer from there, too. I got x equals 0. I got x equals 500. Oh, because I'm doing this wrong, I'm sorry. Because you subtracted five on accident. Oh no! I added, I added it and then I subtracted. It. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just to, just a arithmetic. Ready, set, rain. Oh, light day. <laughs> Should look for Christmas presents. Be smart. <laughs> I, in all the times I've been doing it, I've never dressed up as anything, so probably do the same. I could, I could do that. All right, what do we need now? Eight. Oh yeah, you said that, but for some reason I was thinking that was like in the past. My brain, oh eight's, eight's fun. I like eight. Eight's a, eight's a cool problem. Eight is five sixths to the four X equals 36, excuse me, 36 25ths. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I love this problem. It's a great problem. To the 9 minus x. That's a great problem. This is such a fun one. This is, see, this is why pre is fun, because it takes the algebra 2 things and then makes the problems more exciting. Get we do. Opposite. They do. It's Watch this magic. Are you ready? You know how to do this. You, could, you just are not thinking about it. 5 over 6 to the 4x equals 5 sixths to the negative 2 
to the 9 minus x. I thought I had something to do with negatives, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. Yeah, to be rid Yeah, I like that problem. That's a good one. Negative 18 plus 2x. So 2x equals negative 18, and x equals negative 9. Fun, fun, till daddy takes the T-bird away. All right, what else? Um, I actually understood everything else. I only had some issues on seven and figuring them out right now. Y'all didn't have any problems on the ones that turn into quadratics? Those ones were easy money, or do we need to look at any of those? Okay, so which one do you want to look at? That's not a quadratic one, but we certainly can look at it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's probably just something small. Or, you're, or you were tired and making careless mistakes. One of the two. Or a little of both. <laughs> that's also possible. Number 16 is 100 plus 500 log base something four. four of G equals 1,100. Huh? I didn't write enough numbers. There we go. What? Where? Oh, Garrett's sick? Yeah. Apparently. What do you want to bet? He'll go to ballet. <laughs> he is too sick to come that fast, but not sick enough to. Because that's how it ends. Yep. That's all right. All right, what now? You can switch it. Switch the form. Not yet. I would solve for the log first and then switch it. You have that extra 100 there if you have both sides. And the 500, right? Yeah. One step at a time. Right? 100 minus 100. And then we've got 500 times the log base 4 of g equals 1,000. We divide by 500, we end up with the log base 4 of g equals 2, which means g equals 4 squared, four squared which is 16. So make sure if you're gonna switch forms that the log is by itself first. I added the hundred and the five hundred first. That's what I did. Um, is that all? Oh yeah, no, you can't do that because they're not like terms, right? Because okay. because this five hundred's got all this other junk on it, so mm -hmm. they're not they're not alike. Okay. What else? No, it's, we have like 30 minutes in class. <laughs> I don't even know what they work on. Well, pick one and let's do it. 26. 26. I'm having a grand time doing math. Yahoo and such. Yahoo and such, indeed. The log base 5 of it. You still didn't pick a quadratic one. That's fine. I want to do with the quadratic ones, but I'll do. But we'll, But I'll pick it in a minute. Twenty-six equals the log base five of <coughs> x plus six minus the log base five of four. Now what? No, we can't, because they're not multiplied, right? They're a, a function or a ratio or however you want to talk about it. It would turn it into log 5 x plus 6 over log 5 4. Yeah, so we'd use the quotient rule here, right? Turn this into the log 
base 5 of x equals the log base 5 of x plus 6 over 4. Now what can we do? Now, because now it's just one log and one other log. Yeah, because their arguments are equal. So now we've got x equals x plus 6 over 4. We end up with 4x equals x plus 6. And then move the x over the other side. 3x. x equals 2. True enough. Okay, number correct. Yes. We should do one that y'all didn't even do. We'll get an extra example in for the day. That sounds fun. Let's pick number 23. Okay. Thank you, numbers. All right. So, 23. We've got the log base 8 of x squared plus 11 equals the log base 8 of 92. Wow. Oh! It is. Although it has a 92 in it that we're going to have to deal with factoring. That's going to be fun. Okay, so now, since so it's just logging with log, now we just we drop them. Have to factor it. We can just get rid of the log 8s and then it's x squared plus 11. Oh, there's not an extra x in it. Oh, yeah, you're right. You are right. That's true. There's not, this is like an easy quadratic. Subtract it. x squared equals 81. So x equals plus or minus 9. That was, that was easier than I thought. Oh yeah, they're all, they're all kind of, they're all kind of like that. We really need to do, why didn't, because eh, past me didn't, didn't do that. We really need to do some of like 28 through 48. That's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it right now. We've got lots of time, so it works out well. Although, we also need to talk about 3-5, because we're going to give you a brief lesson over 3-5, and then you're going to be assigned homework on it. Because the lesson is easy. It's mostly, you need to figure out how to do stuff on your calculator. <laughs> so, let's do... One or, I guess we, I guess we kind of did, but let's do like 37. Okay, so 37 is 0 0.75 times e to the 3.4x minus 0 0.3 equals 80.1. Solve for x. What should we do? Should we make everything a natural log? Not yet. Okay. Well, no, but possibly that might be something we do at some point. Uh, yeah, so yeah, using natural log with, it, yeah, that's, that's good, good thinking. That, that natural log is, is probably something we're going to use. Now, so now what? Add the 0 0.3 to both sides. Yes, easy money. And we get 0 0.75 e to the 3.4x equals 8 point, no, 80.4. Yes, which is going to be a larger number than that. Hundred seven point two. Hundred seven point two. Sounds accurate. And then now make both sides natural. So there's two ways to proceed right now. And, and we can talk briefly about both of them. Um, you could 
simply convert to logarithmic form here, and you'd end up with the natural log of 107.2 equals 3.4x, or we could take the natural log of both sides. We'll get the same answer either way. I think just converting it to natural log to logarithmic form is probably the simpler way, but we could do it either one, right? So the natural log of 107.2 equals 3.4x. And then you divide by 3.4. And you end up, if you want to leave it as an exact answer, which is honestly generally pre preferable in uh, pre-cal, you would simply circle this and move on with your life. You could also get the decimal equivalent by shoving that in your calculator and seeing what happens. And you'll end up with, according to the book, 1.37. Although I would, I would argue the case that, honestly, in pre-cal, this is probably a better answer. Okay, so let's talk about lesson 3-5 real quick. Think. Is there anything else we really need to look at? Oh, we might should do some of those ugly ones real quick. Yeah, we should do one of those where we have to do your new favorite method. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, you, it gets us out of a lot of scrapes. So let's do... I don't understand why we got like logarithms. <laughs> logarithms actually have a lot of practical application like real world. Your, your, dad, your dad being an engineer there's a lot of logarithms in like real ones, not just like theoretical stuff. Logarithms are very useful for lots of things. Let's do 45. So six to the X minus two equals five to the two X plus three. Now what do we gotta do? Yeah, got to log both sides. I like to do natural log because it's less writing, but <laughs> you can do whatever. Okay, so then we end up with x minus 2 times the natural log of 6 equals 2x plus 3 times the natural log of 5. Right? Now what? I'm not entirely sure because I'm not alike terms. So you could either go ahead and distribute them both now, or you could divide one of them off and only distribute that on one side. Let's go ahead and start by distributing on both sides, because I think that's going to probably be the way that makes the most sense to most people. We've got the natural log. And you remember, and the thing you've got to remember about these, that where it's ugly like this, is natural log of 6 is a number, not a variable, because there's, there's no letters. I know there's natural log, but so it's just a, it's just a number. Well, we kind of also treat it like it's a variable, so, you know, whatever. X and the natural log of six minus two times the natural log of six equals two X times the natural log of five plus three times the natural log of five. Now, what do we need to happen? So you could, you could start shoving stuff together, but we're actually going to leave them apart for now because before we want to start putting stuff together, we need, we really need the stuff with X's in it on one side and the stuff without X's on the other side, okay. right? Because we want to isolate that X so we can, we can kind of start moving stuff around, add this one. Six, and then we can subtract this one. Okay. 
So then we end up with x times the natural log of 6 minus 2 times the natural log of, oops, 2x, natural log of 5 equals 3 natural log of 5 plus 2 times the natural log of 6. Now what could we do? I would argue no, that that would not, we, because we kind of have a different goal in mind than, than that. Because, so let's, let's kind of rewind back. What, what is our ultimate goal? What are we trying to get to right now? Just one X. Yeah, just X by itself. So X is all trapped up in all that mess. So how can we untrap it? Well, it is the same base, right? Because they're both nat so they're both log base e, so it's the same. The same base is fine. Y'all do know. It's just when we start getting extra stuff, you you some of the other things forget. What if we just did this? And we factor out an x. Now what could we do? Well, we just divide everything else. Mm -hmm. Divide by the natural log of 6 minus 2 times the natural log of 5. So I would argue, personally, as I don't think this is what they do in the book, but I would argue that unless this is a word problem, that this is the best answer right there. And leave it exact. You could. They said to solve each equation. It's solved. Okay. But it also, oh, so this is why they don't do this in the book. So in the book, what they also say, solve each equation, they also say round of the nearest hundred. So that implies that they want the rounded answer. So to get that, you shove that in your calculator and push enter. And you'll get whatever you get. You get what number is this? What did we do? 45? Negative 5.89. They also, they do go a step further in the kind of exact one that they do. And they do the natural log of 5 cubed times 6 squared. What's, which is probably a better, this, actually this, so, so maybe I should, should rewind the tape and probably actually an even better answer than this would be, what's, what's five cubed times six squared? My calculator's 4, over. 4,500. Over six divided by 25 is what? Six 25ths, right? How did they get, oh, I'm looking at the wrong problem. The natural log of 6 25ths. And actually, an even, even better precise answer would be, no, just kidding, you can't do that. It's not a thing. So this is the best exact answer. And then you shove that in your calculator and you get whatever you get. Negative 5.89 is what they got. Okay, 3.5. Here's what you need to know about 3.5. So, I don't cover this. this is, we've talked about it. We have talked about this in this class at least a little. Um, I don't cover regression in anything previous to Algebra 2 because I don't do graphing calculators. Excuse me, anything previous to pre-cal because we don't do graphing calculators in anything previous to pre-cal. Um, we sometimes mention, depending on the class, sometimes mention it in Algebra 2, but not really cover it. So a regression line or a regression function is a parent function that best fits the data that you have, right? And so 
We know about linear functions. We know about exponential functions. We know about quadratic functions, all of those things. So in your calculator somewhere is a way to do a regression, an exponential regression and a quadratic regression and a linear regression. So you need to figure out how to do that on your specific calculator. And that's what you do to solve those problems. And that's it. That's, yeah, that's how to do it. So what do we need to figure out how to do again? Regression. So like if we were gonna, we should do one together. Let's, let's do number one on page 207 as an example. So you need to figure out how to put the table of numbers into your calculator, which actually I don't know how to do it on this calculator, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start guessing and hope for the best. So, go here and probably this one. Exponential, because we're because it wants an exponential function to model the data. Got it? Yeah. Easy. So make sure that it's because there's x. There might depending on your thing. Is there an exponential and a power function? Because those are slightly different. There's exponential and power. Okay. Yeah. They're only ever so slightly different, but they're slightly different. Yeah. So if you can do, and so the, so being able to do that on your calculator and get the, get the answer, and then you'll use that, that regression function that you get to find the value of X at 20, at 20, just by sticking 20 into the, into that equation and pushing enter. Um, the other type of problem is, there's also logarithmic and logistic functions like on, on, on 12 and on eight, but it tells you what kind of function to use. On some of these word problem -y ones, you'll have to test the different regression ones to see which one matches it the most closely. And whichever one, whichever one models it most closely, well, actually it, t it tells you on all of those. Just kidding. None of the problems you have to guess and check. So just kidding. It might be, yeah, it's probably under, it's probably under the data and statistics part. What is that? What are you doing? Let's see. Well, you have to make a list. I like the, oh. You gotta use this list and spreadsheets thing. Yeah, and then you'll put all the stuff in there. And then, yeah. And that's it. So we have that lesson. You'll have homework. I probably will put it in there like right now. Unless I already did. Did I already put something in there? It does, because exponential, right? So yeah, it definitely does. Yep. What did you What did you get? Because I can tell you whether uh, you're doing number one. Two million six hundred one thousand six hundred eighty-seven eight seven seven. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. Same thing that they got within within a margin of error. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have this lesson's homework due on Thursday, and then we'll have a test on Tuesday. Yay! Everybody's favorite. Nice, short, and sweet lesson. And then we get to do trig. I'm so ready, so excited. Trig is the best. Actually, this next lesson isn't the best trig lesson. It's the next trig lesson that's the best. But this next one is quite fun too because we get to do some more graphing with squiggles. <laughs> we like graphing squiggles. All right, let me stop the recording and then I'll help you figure it out on your calculator. Or my calculator that you're borrowing. <laughs> Oh, 
The light fell out. Are you sure? It ca are you sure it came out of there, or was it just on the ground for my electronics class? It probably was on the ground because I can't imagine a three millimeter LED being in that thing. That doesn't make any sense. Adios, hasta luego. Have fun with the hound. <laughs>